Coming up, mix up a batch of fake bath that's a guaranteed gross out. Find out if your friends are heavier than water. Build a junkyard crane to clean up your bedroom. And discover why no one can hear you scream in space. Does that mean that when you scream in space, it sounds like this? Yeah, sure does, Dana. And find out why in just a moment. But first, let's see what Zach's up to. I'm supposed to be tidying up my bedroom. Mum's orders. It's my mess. Why can't I just live in it? I love my toy cars. Where's that magnet I saw earlier? It's around here somewhere. There it is. See? Who needs to tidy up? I know where everything is. This is a junkyard crane lifting up a car wreck. Ready to throw it on the scrap heap. Why don't I make a real junkyard crane with a working electromagnet? It'll help me clean up the cars in my bedroom junkyard. <laughs> hey, Lara. I've got a balanced brain teaser for you. You see these two glasses? They've got exactly the same amount of water in them. So they both weigh the same. And just to prove it, I'll balance them on a ruler. There, a set of water scales. Now, if I drop a coin into one side, we know coins sink, but does it make the glass heavier too? Yep, the weight of the coin is added to the water. I've taken the coin out, Let's see what happens if I just touch the water. It's making this end heavier, but I'm not even touching the glass. When I take my finger out, the scales balance again. Why does poking a finger into the water make it heavier? Good question, Ashley. When you put your finger in the glass, it takes the place of some of the water, which causes the water level to rise. This is known as displacement. The glass becomes heavier not by the weight of Ashley's finger, but by the weight of the water it displaces. Whether the object doing the displacing is heavy or light makes no difference. The glass only becomes heavier by the weight of the water that is displaced. Well, I'm glad we cleared that up. But now I have another question. How much water do we displace? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Ooh, I hope that water wasn't too cold. That's not what friends are for. No, it's not, Taryn. Friends are for helping you with your latest invention. Mr Crane Driver here and my buddy Fraser are helping me build a junkyard crane. Now, this folded red card is going to be the crane arm. I'll just poke a hole through here with a pencil, be the cotton reel on, and poke that up the other side. And now I do the same thing at the other end. Two cotton reels. I attach the string to the first one. It runs over the second reel like this. Now attach the crane arm to the top of the cabin with a pin. And we have our moving junkyard crane. Cool! Time to build an electromagnet to power up this bad boy. This is a large steel nail. I'm gonna wrap it up in a tight coil of electric wire. Starting at one end, I wrap it all the way along. <laughs> nice work with the star stripes, phrase. The more wire on the nail, the better. Finished. I left long wires hang off each end. And the nail is neatly wrapped in its wire coil. A good job, Fraser. The crane is looking very flashy. Speaking of flashy, it's nearly time to power up my magnet. I'll attach alligator clips to my wires. Red on one end, green on the other. Now I feed the electromagnet through here. And the nail needs to hang from the crane arm. 
So I attached a string that could be lifted by my cotton reel. And this is how I'm going to lift things up using my electromagnet. Where I live, the weather is always hot. But there's a really nice breeze up here in the balcony today. You can feel the wind on your face. And you can see the wind blowing things around. I know how to hear when the wind is blowing too. We just need a few metal objects from the kitchen and we can make a wind chime. Tie a length of fishing line to each object. Leave yourself enough line to tie them to a wooden rod. Hang each one at around the same height. So when we put the wind chime in the breeze, the metal things all bump together. Now I'll be able to tell when there's a cool breeze blowing outside just by listening out the window. The oxygen and nitrogen molecules that air is made from push on Sally's wind chime as they pass over it. We hear the sound it makes thanks to those molecules. Sound travels as energy waves and they need something to travel through, like nitrogen and oxygen molecules. In space, where there's no air molecules to convey energy waves, there's no sound. No sound? Boy! I'm sure glad I live here on Earth. There's air to breathe and sound to enjoy. There are lots of sounds to enjoy here on Earth. Birds singing, waves crashing, music playing. What about the sound of Jade vomiting? That's all Damon can hear right now. Poor Jade has an awful tummy bug. <laughs> there she goes again. She has the pukes, all right. Yuck! Just the sound is enough to make me want to bath. It's my job as a friend to cheer Jade up. And I know just the thing to do it. I'm going to need this fruit bowl. And a bit of gelatin dissolved in warm water. Hold on, Jade. A good belly laugh is what she needs. In goes one can of pea and ham soup. Yuck! This soup looks like vomit already. A bit of gelatin will thicken it up nicely. Uh-oh. The sicky splashing sound has set Jade off again. Whoa. Yuck. Now for the finishing touches. A pinch of oatmeal for a bit of texture. And some chopped carrot. Why is there always carrot in puke? Look at that. It's so realistic I can almost taste it. Here comes Jungle Belly Jade. I'll get my sick joke ready. Spread out a nice plate full. Mmm. Oh, wait till she sees this. She's going to think this is so funny. But first I need to let it set in the fridge for half an hour. Vomit is simply the contents of your stomach and intestines, which the body sometimes forces out through the mouth when there is something wrong. There's often carrot in vomit because carrot takes a long time to digest and can remain in the stomach for a few days. Along with half digested food, there's also slimy mucus, stomach acid and a stinky alkaline chemical called bile. Bile is made by your liver and sent to the intestines to help with the digestion of fats. Hey Jade, you're not the only one around here who's been sick. What? She seems grossed out. Hey, this is delicious. I've been out picking flowers in the park. Look at this beautiful bunch of lavender I collected. Ah, uh, they smell so nice. I wish flowers lasted forever. Then I could always have them around my bedroom to enjoy. Hey, wait a minute. I've seen dried flowers that do last forever. I have an idea. This is Borax laundry powder. Mum uses it to get our clothes really clean. I know it absorbs any moisture that comes near it. So I put plenty in the bottom of this box, pop the lavender on top, then cover it up with more Borax. Make sure each stem is well coated. Now I'll tape the box closed so no moist air gets in from outside. That's done. All I have to do now is wait. 
about a week should do it. Okay, seven days later, and it's time to check on my lavender. Hey, well, it's certainly dry. Shake the borax crystals off. And I have one bunch of beautifully dried flowers. And they still smell gorgeous. Borax crystals form naturally when mineral-rich water evaporates from lakes. It's so absorbent that it will soak moisture out of the air or anything around it. A thick coating is enough to draw the water out of the cells of Grace's flowers. Without water in the cells, the fungus and bacteria that cause plant material to decompose cannot survive. I'll put these in a vase. Beautiful dried lavender. Now I just need to remember not to water it. I wish someone would give me a bunch of flowers. Oh, Taryn, you're so sweet. I may be a flower lover, but I also like big, loud machines like Zach's electromagnetic crane. It's time to power off my giant of the junkyard. Hope it works. The alligator clips go onto the battery terminals. Now, let's see if my magnet can pick up a paper clip. The nail is coming down. And yes! My machine has picked up its first bit of junk. When I wind in the string, it lifts the junk right up. Nice job, junkyard dog. When an electric current passes through a wire, it creates a magnetic field around it. If the wire is wound into a tight coil, the magnetic field is concentrated at the coil's centre. The magnetic field inside the coil causes the tiny magnetic fields that occur naturally in the metal of the nail to be aligned in one direction. When this happens, the nail becomes a powerful magnet. Now to move those old cars of mine. Let's start with that blue one. Down comes the magnet. And check that out! My electromagnet crane can even lift a car. This old car is going to the scrap heap. Let her drop, Mr. Crane Driver. Zach's having so much fun with that crane, I don't think he'll ever get his tidying up finished. Our fun's finished for today, though, because we've reached the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.